Hello, this is an explanation of how to use the GCMS with the automation system. When you come to the system, the software should already be running, but if it's not, you can start it by clicking on the instrument number one icon. And then it should come up and eventually it will display the instrument status on one screen and then the other screen is the one where you can add your sample information. On the instrument status screen, it should display a green uh, letters here with the, with the word idle. If it's not, then there's a problem with the instrument. One other thing to check is if the instrument's not running correctly, then the MS source temperature and the MS quad temperature will probably not be set correctly. They should be 230 and 150. And if the four line pressure is higher than shown here, then there may be a problem with the column. In this case, everything is fine, so we can go over here to add a sample. The way we add a sample is you go to Sequence, and then go to Edit Sample Log Table. And then you can just add a line here. The type is typically going to be Sample. The vial is going to be the location in the auto sampler. So the auto sampler is up here. It has numbers 1, through 100 and you should put your sample in a 2 milliliter uh, vial like this with a septum top. You can also use a micro sample vial that has a, a restriction on the bottom to use less sample. You should follow the sample preparation guidelines. You should not have an overly concentrated sample and you should not have a sample uh, with solids or other harsh chemicals in them. In this case, I'm going to put it in the sample spot number 100. So it's there, and we'll go back to the sample log table. So we've chosen vial number 100. And then the sample, we can put in a name for the sample. You can choose a method. We have a number of methods already defined, A through J. They have different run times and uh, different start and end temperatures and ramps. If you need a different method than is indicated here, talk to me and we can create a method for you. In this case, we'll use method D. In the data file, it's important to put in a name that can be saved to disk. So do not put in spaces or funny characters or overly long uh, name in the data file. Finally, you can put in a comment if you want in the, the comment file. And then you can click OK. To run the data, go back to Sequence and select Run. And then go to Run Sequence. And it should run the item that you have put in the sample log table. If we go back over here, it is getting the GC oven ready. Uh, typically, it will work fine and you do not need to override the status. Um, once in a while, if the GC oven is not operating correctly, you can get it to uh, start working by pressing the start button, but normally you should not need to do that. Um, once the GC oven is ready, then it will load the sample, which you can see happening here. So we'll pick up the vial. It will rotate this holder back and forth a number of times. Sometimes that's perfectly normal. It'll put the vial in there. After the vial is loaded, it will wash the syringe. In order for it to wash the syringe, the uh, wash solution solvent B needs to be full of acetone. So if it's not, please let me know. It will do a number of washes before it loads the sample. And then it's going to load the sample, which is doing right now. And now it's putting it into the GC oven. And then it will wash the syringe again afterwards. Now normally you do not need to wait for it to run. But uh, one thing, if you have a particularly low molecular weight compound, you could override the solvent delay. Typically, the uh, mass spectrometer will delay a period of time before turning on so that it does not uh, shorten the life time of the, the uh, mass spec filament. 
If you do this, it will shorten the lifetime and it's not a good thing to do unless you really need to. So normally we just leave this alone and it's fine. Now, normally you can leave and then come back after your samples run. And if you want to look at your data, you can go to another icon here, instrument number one, data analysis. And then you can go to file, load data file. Now, um, normally the data will be sort, uh, stored in the, the data folder. Although if you wish, you can create your own folder inside of data to save your own data. In this case, we have a data set here already, so we will open it up. To look at the spectrum of a peak from the GC output, you can use the right mouse button and draw a box around the peak, and it will create the mass spectrum of that part of the chromatogram. To export the data, you can go to File and export the data to a CSV file, and then you can save it to disk and then put it on USB drive or email it to yourself. Um, last thing is, uh, when you have finished uh, running your sample or finished submitting your sample, please add your name and the time and how many 15-minute increments you've used and your VIP number to the clipboard here. This is the main way we keep track of, of usage. Thank you.